Yeah. So uh, at first um, in 2008, I read this book uh, by Oliver Sacks called Musicophilia, which is how, which speaks to about how music and the brain interact and ideas like musical hallucinations and synesthesia. Uh, and then also I'm just profoundly affected by music. Music has always been a time travel mechanism for me. So just this idea that certain songs in my life take me so specifically to spaces and places and memories and my life, uh, you know, compounded these two, two ideas and, and sort of bore the original draft of the script um, that then I put away until 2020 um, and then revisited it then. Oh man, there's so much, uh, you know, I, I think it's really about eras in my life, you know, that I, if I think about, you know, if I think about Fleetwood Mac rumors, it takes me back to when I was like three years old, you know, with my parents, uh, in their car, like driving into town on the weekends, like play that album over and over. Um, if I think about In Excess was, you know, Kick was one of the first albums I ever had to myself. Depeche Mode, Violator was a big one. So that reminds me of like Summertime. Uh, I was a kid. Uh, Tribe Called Quest reminds me of high school. Uh, the Midnight Marauders album. Kid A by Radiohead is like college for me. Outcast, Anconia, end of college. So like there's so many, like, I, again, I have like, just, there's so much music in my life and sometimes it's hard to just keep track of it. Yeah. I mean, we rehearsed, um, the, the sort of, uh, the dialogue of the scene with the actors, but on the day we really wanted it to feel fresh. Like we didn't want them to sing the song beforehand. So it would feel very real between them. I think the amazing thing about karaoke is that it's very raw and like, you know, you sort of are just uncomfortable and nobody, nobody is a professional singer, you know, unless they are, but like in this case, it was two people having a moment with this song, you know, that, mean something you know from one to the other so it, it was it was just trying to catch the awkwardness and the the discomfort and the 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 realness of the moment for lack of a better descriptor there's so many um there's so many uh it's hard your, i mean on itself what's your, memory, what's your memory with Roxy? actually music so yeah, my mom listened to Avalon the album over and over and over, uh, just as when I was a kid. Um, I remember like she moved from New York to LA uh, in 1991 with my two brothers and I, and I remember being in the back seat of her car as she drove around listening to that album over and over. So that's one version of it to me. And then I had heard DJ Harvey at a gig play to turn you on. Uh, that remix of it that we use in the, the movie. And that was, uh, I just loved hearing Roxy music on a dance floor. You know, it's, it's just a fun way to, to hear them. So those two kind of frameworks were, were cool for me, but yeah, Roxy, I mean, town and country, like, I mean, I like Avalon, there's so many amazing albums they made. And I just think their style was so fun too. So Yeah, of course. Um, I think we really, so Mary Ramos, who was essentially a music supervisor on the movie and DJ Harvey, who was a consultant and then even Ryan Lott, who's the composer. We talked a lot about uh, music as a storyteller. So a lot of the songs lyrically are helping tell the story. So if you pay attention to the songs in each of the scenes, they're actually helping you understand what the subtext for each scene is or what what's actually going on. So we've tried to find songs that really helped feel integral to the story, but also represented the characters, you know, in terms of their taste. So we did a double vinyl album of it and each side kind of represents like Harriet with Max and 
Harriet with David and, you know, Harriet with Morris and sort of Harriet's own individual kind of musical style. So finding it through character, but also like having it help tell the story, if that makes sense. Yeah, so I, we were trying, I was, I was trying to figure out what song would come on the radio and connect these two people and, and sort of be this fun, uplifting song that was nostalgic, but a, a, a big pop hit. And so one song I thought about um, was I'm Like a Bird um, by Nelly, because I just, you know, I've obviously heard it so much. I, I love the song. I, you know, it, it's definitely a throwback and she's such an icon. So we chose that song and we got to clear it. And then Mary Ramos, the music supervisor actually reached out to Nelly's team and Nelly agreed to be a part of the movie. Cause we thought like, Oh, it'd be fun to have a call back later. I don't want to spoil the movie, but to, to maybe have like Nelly appear in some way, shape or form. And then we got her to write a new song with Ryan Lott for the end of the film. So it was kind of this really cool process where she got involved and became part of the musical fabric of the movie. Well, we definitely, you know, when I met Lucy, we were talking about choices for Max and David Cornsweb was really high on the list. Uh, they'd worked together before. Um, so there was this pre-existing chemistry, I think that was really helpful uh, right. for that relationship in the movie. Uh, I also met with David and, you know, got to do some rehearsal with him and and he's, he's just an amazing guy and, and an extraordinary actor. Um, so it was a, a, a few different aspects that were sort of led to that casting, but yeah, um, that was definitely an important part of it. Um, you know, I just love hi-fi. I love record stores. I love vinyl. I like the tangibility of it. And I think a lot of the movie is about tangibility. It's about these objects we hold on to that carry stories with them. And I, so I think the object of a record or even hi-fi or the chair or, you know, David's family's antique store in the movie, like each of these objects carry a story with them. And I think that's kind of the, the, the beauty of it, um, you know, is that each object is, can be personified in, in this weird way um, and carry a, a story with it. So I, I loved that aspect of a movie about the past with all of these objects that represented the past, um, you know, not only through song, but through object as well. David's father's car, you know, um, all of these objects help tell you who these people were um, through the details, if that makes sense. <laughs> 